Hello and welcome back to Calculus 3 for one last time. This is it. The final exam review. That will be tomorrow is the final. Um, chapters 13 through 17, 4. And... Um, about 13 to 15 problems uh, 100 points for 30 percent of the grade which is almost a third so high stakes on on this one not as high as mine mine was 100 percent so <laughs> you're still right uh, what else do we have so the, the topics, um, learning outcomes uh, for the course are not very helpful because they technically list everything. Um, and then they single out Green's theorem as well. So definitely that's there. Um, so work with vectors. In R2 and R3. Guys, this is adding, subtracting, multiplying, dot product, cross product, um, the um, directional uh, derivative for unit vector and all of that good stuff. <clears throat> so technically, this is chapter 13. Yes? Does it include planar stuff too? Or? What do you mean? Like working with vectors and planes, like creating planes out of vectors? Well, that's going to be uh, separate. I'm going to put the plane and uh, and that stuff is separate. So, so work with vectors. Be able to to get them. You, you need a cross product to find the right the normal vector and some stuff. So, yeah. Um, then we have plane and the line and the sphere. Um, R3 shapes like the cone and hyper, hyperboloids and all that good stuff, right? We have that and the and the cone and then paraboloid and so on. Uh, you know, I'm gonna say plane and then also tangent, so plus tangent plane. So I don't, I don't have to. And then tangent plane leads into approximation, linear approximation. So we're all good there. Uh, partial derivatives. Ooh, sorry, vector valued functions. And we know that's your vector r of t. And then I'll say plus calc, right? I should spell it with k's. Calc. Uh, meaning being able to differentiate and integrate. You had the problem. You, you didn't do well as a class on that problem, I remember. Exam 1. With... Uh, velocity and acceleration and a position i gave you velocity you were supposed to integrate to get the position and use the given vector to come up with a c and then you were supposed to differentiate to get the acceleration if i remember very well so as a class clearly we had some very high grades but as a class you you didn't do too hot on uh, on that one and that's vector valued function for you so you have the x motion and a y motion and a z motion, right? Decomposed into three vectors. So you can integrate, differentiate, and all that. So make sure you can you can do that stuff. Um, we also have. So now we have the. Uh, I'll just say R three function. meaning z equals f of x, y. We have partial derivatives. Partial. 
directional derivatives. Gradient. What else? Chain rule in a parenthesis tree. Yeah. You know what that means. Uh, before Lagrange, we have min max, I think, and then Lagrange. Yeah. Is there anything before that? No. So, min max saddle with that annoying uh, D equation, fxx, f y y minus fxy squared remember that one and then lagrange lagrange multipliers uh, now we're moving into double integrals which are rectangular general polar and then triple integrals, which are rectangular, general, cylindrical, spherical. Um, as I said, uh, there will be no transformation and also the mass calculation and stuff that's, you know, mainly for mechanical engineers, so... Mass will not be on. Yes, we, you had the mass on the previous exam, so... You either know it or you don't know it, and if you are a mechanical engineer and you don't know it, then you're not a mechanical engineer, it's very simple. <laughs> I mean, you, you think about it, you are, but you're not. Mass calculation with the center of mass and the stuff that it's important for, for that one unit, right? So. Wait, there will or will not be a center of mass? Because the last one no center of mass and no no transformation. So you are kicking out sixteen six and sixteen seven. Is that sixteen six and sixteen seven? Seven. Yeah, I th I think too. I can check, but then I have to press the button here. So ah, I'll press the button. Yep, sixteen six and sixteen seven. Fine. Um, then we are working with uh, vector fields. Uh, basic, are you able to graph a vector field given a vector field, right, the 2D at least? So, vector fields. And then we have line integral. Um, now, line integral has uh, two flavors, right? There is a line integral that it's um, basic, let's call it basic, and then you have over vector field. Then... Break down the formula for that again, the vector field. It's just, it's the vector field. FDR, yeah, FDR. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, or the T or N, depending on which one you, you, you have, okay. right? So, so F, F uh, dot T uh, or F dot N, depends on which, which one you need. Uh, line integral, and then uh, that moves into uh, conservative vector field, which leads into the potential function phi. And then at the end, Green's theorem, you have the circulation and flux, which both of these have the those um, the, the guts, what I call the guts of the integral, right? The curl. and divergence. Wow, that's the entire course. Now, for integration over here, 
to specify this more able to compute double and triple integrals right from the inside out able to set up integral given picture or a graph and then able to change oh I'm, I'm, I have to be very careful how to how to phrase this because we are not changing the the variables like in that we said we don't have that section but remember how I, I asked you to integrate um, that one problem and you had to switch it to cylindrical coordinates so able to switch between able to switch between coordinate systems I don't know because you have the coordinate system rectangular coordinate system and then you have the cylindrical and you have a spherical so you get the spherical integral you want to do it in spherical coordinates you don't want to do that in rectangular because it's just going to create a lot of mess am I forgetting anything is there anything that you would like to add to this mess what would you like to add well, not to add just a general question um, what do you think the what do you think the percentage is going to be of new content like basically chapter 17 stuff versus <sighs> stuff we've already learned I don't know guess who's not sleeping tonight so <laughs> you are definitely guaranteed to have a line integral in the Green's theorem so you know that's two problems for sure um, hundred percent now you should have something with the vector field so you have three problems in chapter 17 right so that's that's guaranteed you are guaranteed to have either mean max saddle or Lagrange but if I'm to put the percentages on Lagrange is much better because it has bigger impact on your on your work later on you have to have chain rule the gradient is going to be the part of Lagrange anyway the gradient is also the part of the of what very good what's gradient Yes, vector field, very good. And what else? Yes. So gradient it has a lot of application. We have five different things at least. I mean, gradient itself plus four different places when it pops up. So uh, that's a, that, that's definitely going to be seen at least two or three problems in some form, right? You have Lagrange, you have it there. Um, we have the ascent and descent, right? You you had that on your on one of your exams. So there's there. Um, a vector of partial derivatives dotted with the uh, unit vector u is giving us oh, it's the directional. directional derivative, it's, it's in there, right? Um, tangent plane has a gradient of the, right? Uh, partial derivatives to give you the, the vector so abc, right? The normal vector for the three to four questions you can expect from 17 then? Or? No, you you have three problems, most likely you have three problems from 17. Gradient was in chapter 13. No, no, I know that. I I'm sorry, know chapter was, 14. You said a lot of maybe. I didn't know if it was. So was you are going to look at three problems from 17, but then we have a lot of other stuff, right? Everything's mingled together. And yeah. that's, yeah. So you if you know main players, right, the, one of the main players is a partial derivative. Obviously, you can't take partial derivative half of your exam is done, right? Um, chain rule, right? You make a tree and then you write the formula. Uh, on the exam I had, um, I asked you to compute the formula at I think t equals 1 or t equals 10 and then three or four of you ignored it completely. So you gave me the correct chain rule but you never plugged in 10 or 1 or whatever it was to actually get the answer. I believe the answer was like 4 fifths or something like that. If you plug in uh, t equals the number that I, that I gave you. 
I think it was equal, man. I, I think. So uh, you get four fifths, or you get eight point zero point eight or eight tenths, whatever you got. Um, just you know, read the question and then make sure that you have all of the the parts in there. Um, I did specify already that you guys didn't do well on that velocity acceleration position problem where I gave you velocity you're supposed to integrate and differentiate the same thing uh, same equation to get the other two uh, for R3 shapes uh, if I put R3 shapes on it it's going to be again matching the equation uh, you had a one point to graph that helix uh, on one of the exams, so on the other exam, you guys had uh, one problem like A and B, where you had to match the equation to the shape and then shape to the equation, right? So, so that could be uh, something similar. Uh, if there is a multiple choice question, then there is no partial credit on that question, so that's why I don't like multiple choice. Uh, you can't circle the wrong answer and claim partially correct, right? That, that makes no sense. So I generally stay away from uh, multiple choice, but if I am to put the shapes, it would be something along the lines of what you guys have seen uh, on the exam where you are matching equations to the shape, relation shape to equation, or something that it's fairly simple to graph. Let's say uh, elliptical paraboloid or um, hyperbolic paraboloid or cone, right? Stuff that is very easy. You're not going to, I'm not going to ask you to graph by hand hyperbolic uh, paraboloid, which is right saddle. You saw my drawing on the board, right? Along with the dragon horse or whatever that thing was. Um, The sphere, equation of the sphere, right? It pops up and we have spherical coordinates. It's very important, right? We use rho for its radius and we use r for the radius of a circle for 2D. Um, the equation of the plane, uh, line in 3D, line segment. I think I just wrote line. Uh, I'm actually going to put, now I'm gonna add stuff. So uh, whatever I wrote line, I'm going to say plus line segment. plus parametrization. So you need to know parametric equations because parametrization of the line is extremely important because you get to do green theory, you get to do like all of the other stuff that is right line integrals and uh, you have a whole bunch of problems so on a homework, if you have done homework, I hope you did, uh, that has parametrization of the uh, the line and line segment. So it says it goes from, I don't know, 3, 4, 5 to negative 1, negative 4, negative 9, whatever. Working with vectors in 2D, 3D, being able to add and subtract and multiply by a scalar, which is just scaling them, uh, being able to find uh, the whole spiel of things, right? You have um, well, I, I didn't mention by name, and I should have. So, guys, you have this as a, as a package deal, right? You have the vectors and vector calculations, and then you have the uh, basic unit vector, right? Uh, vector divided by its magnitude. And then you have the tangent vector, and then the normal vector, and then you have the curvature, right? I did not specify curvature. I should. So, working with vectors, maybe I should... Um, just put add, subtract, multiply. Now multiply by a constant, do the dot product, do the cross product. So you have like three different things in multiply. Um, unit vector. And then you have the tangent, normal, curvature. So that's, and I, I think I think we got it all at this point. 
Now it would be easier if we just listed what is not there, obviously, right? And um, I hope that as you look at Calc 3, you find it that, oh, you know what I forgot? Continuity and, uh, and the limits and non-existing limits and two paths, that stuff. Because continuous surfaces are important and then on, I don't know. You know, limits, uh, limits are important. Because we don't actually, we do have limits for vector valued functions and we should have limits for, uh, right? Limits for vector valued functions. Um, that, that that's under calculus. I, I already have that. You look at all the way on the bottom, right? It says calc. So vector valued functions calc. Calcs are limits and derivatives and integrals, right? And that most of that stuff was in that one question that didn't go too well on on um, calc one, right? When I gave you velocity and I asked for other stuff. <laughs> just a function here limits two paths continuity continuity is the same as in calc 1 continuity at the point right if f of a exists and I mean f of a b exists in this case uh, limit exists and then they're the same so it's, it's the same thing Train rule to draw the tree, directional derivatives, ascend, descent, obviously, and um, yeah, we're good to go. That's that's it. I hope you're not uh, disappointed with the with the course. Primarily for electrical and mechanical engineering, and if you are computer science sitting in a Calc three class, I admire your intellectual curiosity. It's required. What? Yeah. Why? That's why I'm here. For which for which program? Uh, for your computer science. You need a uh, calc three and linear algebra. And these for pits too. No, you need the discrete math. My man. Discrete math. And linear algebra. That's a fun class, discrete math. Yeah, discrete and, and linear. That's that's what you need. Calc three and DFQ are useless. For for computer science. Useless. There's nothing in unless you are you are programming um, um, video game engine and you need to mimic 3D physics world right with uh, math rules yeah then you need Calc 3 but there is right if you are designing hardware components then you are electrical engineer technically so yeah then you need calculus 17 but for computer science and programming you need Calc 2 because of sequences in series and then you need um, discrete and linear, and you're out unless you're going to go into high end, and you need fast Fourier transforms and things like that, which is much later on, uh, you know, in in math. But this class, you know, such as life. So yeah, li but linear algebra is is very important, and discrete math is the most important class for computer science because it teaches you algorithms, logic, and um, uh, some of the number number systems and number theory that you need for primes and things like that so you can uh, do encryption and things like that. So it's a lot of, lot of cool stuff there. All right, uh, back to Calc 3. Anything else? Um, I think we covered everything for, uh, for this. We can take a look at some problems yeah. and... Uh, um, in general, on the final, guys, if you are working on a problem and you're already on a, on a page, you know, it's taking you six pages, you're definitely doing something wrong, <laughs> right? So, uh, they should be uh, short and sweet. Um, the the hell can break loose in um, in Lagrange, right? So I have to make sure I, I keep that problem civil like it was on your exam with a box with the open top right 
So a box with the open top, if you're talking about the surface area, then you just have x squared on the bottom, you don't have x squared on the top. So it's not 2x squared, it's 1x squared for surface area, and 4xy's for the round. Um, so there's that. Um, I believe your exam problem was 2 by 2 by 4 or something like that. I, I, don't, I don't remember, or 4 by 4 by 2. Um, just re redo that problem just in case. Um, you also have a short and sweet calculation on your project for Lagrange with those watches, right? That was not, I hope you did not find that problem hard to compute, but the business aspect analysis of that and what I'm hoping to see is the chart of multiple values showing that your calculation does pro provide the best answer. So you know what the, what the answer is, then you can just compute around that number, making up other uh, values, which will produce, so you can have a chart of, I don't know, eight or 10 rows, um, with uh, one of those rows being your calculation, which is what you found, and then the other ones are just to show that if you pick any random combination around the numbers you got, the values will be right, not optimal. So that's uh, that's a kind of cool thing to to do. Um, yeah, that's that's that. All right, so let's take a look at some some problems. Um, I definitely want to look at the problem because you can definitely expect to see the problem with uh, setting up the integrals where it says set up, don't compute, right? Or uh, maybe even convert from one coordinates to another coordinates and even say don't compute even then. Uh, generally we want to change from one coordinate system to another because it's more convenient to compute. But on this exam I did ask you to set up that spherical integral in rectangular coordinates, right? Well, that was po completely pointless, but, right, because why Why set it up in, in, in XYZ? You're never going to compute it in XYZ. You would do that in spherical coordinates. But it was more for uh, practice for the equation of the sphere, equation of the circle, and then uh, making sure that the horror you see there is something that you will not be computing, right? That's why we have spherical coordinates, uh, to make that problem easy and and, and fun. All right, so let's take a look at these problems. I did say I would like to work out uh, one of the setup problems with ON, so let's see what we can come up with this. Uh, the uh, question is about the volume of the shape that we get when we intersect the sphere centered at the origin 0, 0, 0, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to 100. Uh, guys, meaning rho is 10, right? Rho, which is the radius, is, is 10. And then we have uh, x minus 5, which is uh, a squared plus y squared uh, equals 25. This is going to be a cylinder, which is um, uh, touching the z-axis going up. Now, this is this this is not a, a, an easy problem because uh, you know if you if you want to graph this you have the you have your sphere x y and Z. Now, this is a terrible way to draw this. I'll draw the top view, but the cylinder is touching the Z axis. And it's cutting through the sphere. So you are you know when you have a, 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 a sphere and then you, you, you drill a hole directly through it, you get like a bead, right, for a necklace or whatever, like a pearl, right? Well, this, is, uh, th this hole is on the side. So when you look from the, from the top view, so this would be the, the top view now, you have your 
circle, which is the equator of the sphere. This is where the, the sphere is the, the fattest. And then, because it's x minus 5 for the cylinder, this is 0, this is 5, this is 10. The sphere for the cylinder cuts through here. So they want the, the volume of this. Now remember that shape is not a cylinder because it cut through the sphere. So when you, when you are looking at this object from a side, you're just seeing a sphere. The side view is just a sphere. Side view. Now if you're not an engineer, obviously all of this is just shooting right over the head, but so when you're looking at the side view and um, the side view since uh, this is on X, uh, you take a look at uh, this is a Z axis here, you will have your shape cut through here because actually this is terrible to draw, but if I draw the cylinder by the way it should be, it should be cutting on the side, but it has to bend this edge of the cylinder right here to conform. So when you look at the side view, um, and uh, technically that's when you when you when you lift that up. So Z is actually pointing into your, your face, and this axis is a Y. Your Z axis over here is the equation of the sphere on top and equation of the sphere on the bottom for a DZ, right? So, so your DZ is going to the integral, so the integral DZ. Well, you will have to convert it later. Right, but at least you can you can check it, right? Which way it goes. So the dz in this case, right, would be the bottom of the sphere and the top of the sphere. Um, so yes, yeah, so z equals one hundred minus x squared minus y squared, and a negative on the bottom and a positive on top. One hundred minus x squared minus y squared. So that's your z component. You can't you can't do this problem in terms of um, in terms of dx, right? So the dz is the one that it's uh, on the on the inner. And then um, you have the y and then you have so then you have the dy and then you have dx with the, the integrals. Um, so x is gonna be 0 to 10 Right, we see that. That's on the on the top view. We see zero to ten, and uh, the dy uh, is going to be um, now. What's dy? Hmm. I would think the two equations are in the circle. Yeah. yeah. So I would limit it with x is a variable. Yes. So this is the dy on the top view. See, this problem is a little bit spicy for the final, but it's a good exercise to chase different views and, and see which one. Uh, so the, the dy would be the two equations of the of the circle. Just x squared and 5 minus x squared? Or 10 minus x squared? Yeah, no, it's not 10. Your radius is 5 for the circle. Yeah, but um, isn't the parabola up to 10? So. There's no parabola here, just circles. So. In, and it's shifted, so x minus 5 is the is a unit. You, you don't get to change x minus 5. So, and the radius of this one is 5. So 25 minus x minus 5 squared. I get that. I'm, no, I'm just talking about setting up the limits of integration. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, so this limit over here seems to be negative uh, 25 minus x minus 5 squared, and the top is the positive. 25 minus x minus 25 squared. 
uh, no function inside because they're looking for the volume. And now to turn this into spherical coordinates, uh, good luck. So, like, I can see you can clearly turn in the, the z limits to make it 100, or root 100 minus r squared, but I, I have no idea how you, get, how you change the y limits. So, rho, well, for the, now for the spherical integral, we have sine phi, we have rho squared, I'll put the row squared in front and then d rho d phi d theta now the question is which of these is the best to use so Phi measures, so this is your phi. Let's say phi goes from no, negative pi to or negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Yes. So that's negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Uh, what's happening with our rho? Rho. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Rho is the radius, and see, rho travels along this circle here but it also travels along the z-axis as well doesn't it no it just has it's just confined in this circle it's just confined here in this circle on the on its edge because a row starts here and draws the outline of the right oh okay so row is gonna go zero on the bottom Rho is going to go zero on the bottom and it's going to trace along th this circle. Yeah, something, something polar. Whatever is this uh, circle in polar coordinates. Is that cosine? Do I have that right? Or? Uh, we'll have to graph it. I. Okay, it, so it could be 10 cosine theta. Let me just see um, for polar coordinates real quick. Um, so I'm going to jump. Give me, give me one second. So mode, um, switch to polar coordinates, switch to radians, quit, y equals... And then uh, say um, ten cosine theta graph. Yes, ten cosine theta. So ten cosine theta is going to give you this this line. So this is ten cosine theta here. And then uh, for your uh, theta limits. It's assuming negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 again, right? Uh, so, theta goes on x-axis, yeah. and um, we start here, and we have to end there. Is it negative pi to pi? Because I'm thinking it starts, it starts, like... The angle from the x-axis, it starts on a negative y-axis and then goes, follows through to the y-axis, the positive y-axis. It starts at zero, and it should go down for counterclockwise, but pi over two only gives you half of the circle, right? Okay. Pi over two ends here, and then if you add another pi over two, you end up on the x-axis. My thinking is negative pi to pi. Oh, uh, I hear what you said. Okay, but... You're starting at the origin, and you have to go half of the circle on the bottom, and you cut up with x-axis, and then you go the upper half. Okay. 
So half of the circle is pi, the other half of the circle is pi. Because remember, this is not the, the, the phi angle that you get to... Yeah, because the phi angle is up and down. I'm just more thinking of... So, like in the, the top view graph you have right there... Yeah. Isn't the angle only going between the negative y-axis and the positive y-axis? I get what you. I get what you're saying because let me let me draw the the representative pizza, representative pizza slice. So this is the representative pizza slice right here. So it starts at zero, which is completely downwards. Right? Oh yes, no, you are completely. I was wrong. You are completely right. It's pi over two. Yes, okay. you are completely right because. It it will always remain in the third quad uh, in the fourth quadrant as it goes from zero zero to to ten zero. It is always in the lower quadrant and then it's always in the upper quadrant the quadrant one when it's on the yes. Okay. I, I agree now. Um, but my only question is though because like I was like I was kind of getting to understand what you were saying with the yeah. negative pi to pi. So maybe I'm just getting confused with the limits. But if you plug negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 into that the 10 cosine theta which we just created as the limit it won't create the full circle when it integrating throughout won't it? but remember when you plug in the the limits you will be plugging this 10 cosine theta into integrated uh into integrated row you have a row squared over there so you'll be squaring oh, and you'll what, be oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay you will you will have row cubed over three yeah. So that's cosine cubed over, so you're just going to mess everything up. Anyway. Gotcha. So it's easier just to think about it as individual, individual functions. That's why I drew all the side views and everything to... This is a, a, a very complicated problem to, you know, to enjoy. Now, much better one is so, the one with the wedge. <laughs> one more, like, quick question. So, in the terms, can you, like, scroll up just a little bit to the side view there? Um, so in the terms of the side view, when we're integrating using spherical coordinates, rho is not the hypotenuse thing right, of that little triangle you drew, right? Rho is the distance along the uh, axis. Don't look at this. Uh, this was a DZ, so that doesn't no, exist. No, I, I get that, but just... The, the phi, now rho is the stretch from the origin to always the edge of the object. So rho stretches out all the time. So then, he, so all right, because like this is what's really confusing with the spherical coordinates. If you drop an altitude, you see the line you have going from the x-axis to the edge of the circle, or from the x-axis to the edge of the circle there. If you drop an altitude, is rho the the bottom edge or is rho the hypotenuse? The, the rho is this guy. It's the hypotenuse, right? Yeah, yeah. So then our equation, can you explain how the equation of 10 cosine phi can, is rho? You, we, you have it on the top view, the blue line is also rho. But so because look, none of this stuff exists. None of this stuff exists. We are looking only for the shaded region. I get that, but it does exist when you move to the side view, because we're riding along the top edge. No, 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 no. You punch the you punch the hole through the. Look, mm -hmm. I need you. Well, if you had the play doh and a, and a, and a wider straw. You make a ball out of play-doh and you punch out the with a straw the shape that is in the straw is what counts the rest you throw the the ball doesn't exist it's yeah. the shape that is in the straw which is which is, which looks like a cylinder which is which is cut like this but when you look at it from the top it looks like a cylinder. so you, when you when you look at the straw all you see is a cylinder, right? So your your uh, row has to travel on the black circle, not the blue one I, I erased. 
it travels on the black circle, and that's the equation of the cosine okay, theta. But wouldn't the row also need to travel on the upper edge of the circle, which we have shown as a side view? But th that's cut with a phi, with a with a phi, with the other coordinates, right? Because we do have the equation of the uh, we ho we do have the full ball. I mean, we don't have the full ball. We only have the half of the ball, pi over two, pi over two, which is the half of the ball we care about. Make sense? Meditate on this more. It will, it, it sinks in, and if you, if you have a Play-Doh and, and a straw, <laughs> just, you know, make it. I'm just more concerned, so, with what we covered with 10 cosine theta, aren't we only covering the... Inside of the black circle. Yes. Yes. But isn't the distance from that different than the, so in the side view, that red dashed line that's going along the top of the circle, which is still included. This is not included over here. I know that isn't, but the edge of the circle is. So the circle is fattest right here. And then it's less fat over here, and the less fat over here, and the less fat over here. Oh, I get what you're saying. Okay. Right? I think we, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we look at the, at the fattest part as you shine the light. Okay. All right? Good. So the next problem is the the wedge the wedge problem the one with the what is the best integration to use to find the volume of the the wedge now nothing was given you just had the wedge and that was it you see that there is a a rounded shape on the bottom so it's not like our friend Hodor over here it's a rounded and you can consider that round to be either a circle or a parabola so you know take uh, two three minutes to um, to try to to draw this uh, some of you did circle and some of you did the parabola on the bottom and then I'll give you my uh, I'll, do, I'll do both obviously but I want to give you you know five ten minutes to try five minutes uh, to try uh, your hand if it if it wasn't you know if it didn't go too well on the and I'll be I'll be right back I'm gonna bring the, the goodies I'm going to attempt to figure out D, and if I can, I'll send a picture of the graph slash what I did. All of these are using double integration. Why don't you just show? Okay. Oh, okay. Of uh, what legend grades? Yes. I think that's, I want to say 15. Possibly. Yeah, one section. Let me look at my notebook. I can tell you. 
I think it's only like six or seven, right? It was, it was right before four. Min and Max. I didn't know we were. In fifth, in section 15. I think it would have been. Okay, graphs and level curves. Right before, like, directional derivatives and shit. Partial derivatives, chain rules, directional derivatives, and the gradient. It's 15.5. Do you want to see the notes? I have his online. Yeah. I mean, mine are just one hit, one his eyes. I just wanted to, like, know exactly what section and go home and watch. Yeah. 15.5. Thank you. What I watched he, that what one. Did he it was say about your project? Huh? What did he say about your project? Um, here, I'll just like show it to you. That's what I have. It's not finished. It's just like, like what is it? Just like a write up of what you have? Uh, yeah. It's mm -hmm. Problem two, the egg problem is completely done. Like the graphs and everything. Yeah. Wait, um, I don't. Why did you put it in this? Are we supposed to do that? Yeah, did he wants it in that? something like that, <laughs> or like a folder or something. What does he want design? What does he want? He said, like, use, like, a fun font or something, or, like, oh, say something nice. Bro, this is he not said, like, make a picture and pull it. Mine honestly might just be, like, two middle things. things. I, just, oh, so I was going to ask him, like, you know, he always goes, like, portal yeah, yeah, so I was going to make, like, the I aperture have, logo, yeah. and, or not make it, just go on yeah. and find the You're aperture logo. The so it's a report, and then instead of an actual report, It's basically, like, take the math problems and write them up like you're handing them into your chemistry teacher. That's essentially Yeah, like he literally wrote out I have a friend who is writing a Ferris wheel. Yeah. He wrote paragraphs. Like a lab report. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. Bro, I'm literally gonna hand it in on a piece of paper I handwritten. Right. And no, if you honestly, give me anything less than an eighty. No, if, if it doesn't have a cover page and if it's handwritten, it's crinkled edges or like stains on it, instant zero. It has to be like that in for a waste of time. If I walked into any MIT research lab and said, don't hand that in if it's written on paper, they would literally kick me the fuck out. Well, the thing is, I, I can understand what he's... Uh, the, the end goal is like, that in 20 years, you're going to have to do that for the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what he's saying. Right, like, project, especially for the Lagrange at the end. Project. Like, that's kind of like a, a business yeah. proposition. No, no, so he wants it as like... I get that, but like... The whole write-up thing, like the my friend thing, like I'll do the math. Well, the thing is, that's also for well, you and I. We're physics, nice right? Yeah. So, I'm like, say we go into research and we're like studying like motion, like you know, or some shit like that. When we do our paper, when we like get our peer-reviewed papers, we need to write something similar to that. Yeah, we may not be like my. We're not gonna have that scenario, but we'll have like you know, the Large Hadron Collider was you know fucking whatever. Yeah, I'm I, I don't know. Oh, I, I have the folder too. Oh, shit, yeah. Um, so, every single... He really likes the... ...ever have taken the, and will ever take is... Right. I just use Desmos. How'd you grab the... So, grab okay, so for the egg... So which one? Version? The egg. Oh. He really likes my graph, and I just use fucking Desmos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, well, I actually measured my egg and I got what I... Yeah, that's all you need. You need, like, an ellipse. To, you need to know... Well, the like, thing is, I did all the work for this yeah. at yeah, my I job, say, like, and I just <laughs> used I feel like variables, yeah. and then I did all the work through variables, and then right at the end, I just... You measured the egg. Yeah. 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 That's... No, that's yeah, what yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, it's not... Like, you said. did the displacement Wait, Guys, yes. my power was out all the time. Um, he said... No, no, so, wait, so why were you wanting to... Yeah, I took pictures of it. I had a really, really terrible day. I like got home and my brother like he said, basically right. attacked me. He also me. Like, wants exactly a picture that. of just a fucking hard boiled egg on a piece of paper. Just, just I'm sitting like, on a piece of paper. I was gagging while I was taking the fucking picture. Like, like, hey, the smell of hard boiled eggs. Like, I was in my kitchen doing math gagging. Did you have the boiled? Well, I mean, you don't have to. Measure it and put the water in the sink. Well, you have until like three weeks. I'm not doing this. 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 I can't. I will do all of the of work that he run, wants, but I'm not putting it into like I'm not writing an essay about the it. Thing is, it's like, so I like so I'm not I'm not I'll no, I'll do it like so typed, so but I'll do but um, like no, even like I understand the contour plot, like because that's yeah, like he's like explain the contour plot um, in a paragraph. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But like, if I have my math, you know what the math is trying. The thing is, he doesn't want to see it. Like here, did you see? I can't think of Like, so that's why. This is what. But like the write-up skill should have just been. 
part C of three, yeah. Yeah. which is write a paragraph explaining you know right. So here's the right. Here's the egg one. You know, like converting all of this, like getting all these answers. That like took like two pages worth of like me like you writing, don't. scribbling and shit. But I don't care how bad you are. No, that's all he wants to see. Like he wants to see like so rectangle or answer. Right angle polar. I don't like that. I will call the police. That's all he wants to see. I don't want to see anything else. Like, yeah, this shit makes me on the top If I, I did the math, so, if I get a 50 on tomorrow. the project and a 50 on the final, I don't know. Well, that's uh, us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a trash that's all the math. Right. Okay. Do, they, do you notice like the grades even get transferred yeah. for this, or it's just passing? No, out? just passing. Out. So when you're transferring, is he coming back? Or he's, or he's, he's, he's coming back. He said he was gonna like do something for ten minutes while we're so supposed to work on that problem from our exam. So, uh, yeah. No, honestly. Well, the thing is, it's worth the same amount of homework. So if he says you can skip the homework, then you can do the homework and skip the write up. Yeah. No, he said he'd give us a hundred on the homework if we do well on the test. So we don't do any homework. Because you don't need that. He does it by need based. Oh, I. Or you don't take any chances. I'm not taking any chances. I'm just, I'm still turning in like two or three by third of age. I don't know how I get a question. This is again a chance of that. This is all my sister's homework. I'm literally just going to do that. Write my name right here and hand that in. Okay, I'll pull up. This is my sister's homework from last year. She did it all through online, but she kept all her sheets. So He's gonna done. know that's not your handwriting. Doesn't I'll just like fucking copy this page. And are, you sure you will, are, are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yes. He. Great. She has. Yeah. Does she ever have one? That's the one thing she didn't fucking have. That's some. Bullshit. That's the one fucking thing she did not have. Nope. Wow. My friend does, but he almost failed the class, so I wouldn't trust him. That the, the whole final report thing is really. Rubbing my ass the wrong way. It took me like a solid like hour and a half to get all of this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just check. <laughs> like once you across. if you do the actual work, if you put in like a solid forty five minutes, you'll be fine. Wait, so we don't turn in the work that's going work then, right? What? We're not turning in our physical work for the lab then. For the like lab, this? the project. Yeah. No, he doesn't want that. He just wants every major milestone within the calculations. Sounds good. Should be gonna be easy. I fucking hate lab reports. Lab reports take me. Lab reports are just easy. The thing is, the math is like takes like a decent amount of time on this. Like the egg that took me like a two of them were on check. The egg, the egg is the only thing that's like. The thing is, I had checked to check if I was doing everything correctly, but I actually did it myself. It took me like a good hour, forty five, maybe forty five. I wonder if he knows that there's an easier way to solve for the egg. With the disc? Yeah, you can just do disc and washer method than fucking, or actually be shell, I guess. Really. Well, the thing is, he yeah. he wants us to practice through the Double integrals, double but integral. like, if I could solve it a different way, I just want to solve it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not asking questions. I just want to fucking get the credits and never have to. I hear what you're saying. It's just going to be... So I gotta finish two, four, and do the project tomorrow. I mean, I've done most of the project already, but it's just so. Wait, much how much of two do you have? Do you have any of two done? Yeah, most of two done. Honestly, if you think about it, we have twenty-four hours. Yeah, I'll so just 24 give you like hours worth of like doing stuff for this class. Twenty-two hours. Twenty-two hours worth of doing stuff for this class. Yeah. 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 I might as well just like put some more grindstone in here. Let's take a look at this. I'll take some more bread, okay? Thank you. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Ciao. Please don't fail me. <laughs> That's all I ask. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a good score and write my yeah, professor. If you don't fail me. Uh, actually, I'm not looking for good scores. I'm looking for bad ones. Why? So that, you know, those who shop for instructors miss my class. <laughs> I can get a zero. I can get a zero on my linear algebra final and still get a seventy-five in the class. Wow! But I have to get a fifty. You know, yes, like, you have to get a fifty. That's so. So we are going to set up the coordinate system. Wait, is that still going? Yes. <laughs> so we have the coordinate system over here, and uh, I'm going to put. So there is a Z, and now. To make it into a right coordinate system, this is my x and this is my y. Now, if you look at this um, base, 
because I this is the setup uh, if I'm going to do the this is the setup if I'm doing the um, what do you call it parabola so <laughs> what we have here is yeah just spread it. I'll, I'll have one here <laughs> So, so the base now is going to look like like this. See, I'm this. I'm doing a parabola first. So if I do it as a as a parabola, and this is negative a, and this is a positive a, then the value over here has to be a squared. That's so why. This is x, y, thank you. Yes, x, y. This is the base. So in this case, uh, it is x, x, y. So now what we have is so x, y. And now side. would be zy because that's the way the the plane tilts we already know that on the y-axis this is a squared and then we can just choose let's say b on the z-axis because we are working in general terms nothing was given uh, certain values you must have so if you pick a's you your a squared is fixed and then we just need to have some height on the z so we could call it b all right triple integral since it's a volume integral we have nothing inside dz dy dx now we see that x goes from negative a to a as you draw dx uh, observe that your y is stuck on the parabola on the bottom so that's y equal x squared on the bottom and a squared on top is a flat line uh, at the constant a squared so if a is 3 then you have negative 3 to positive 3 negative 3 to positive 3 and you have x squared to 9 and now we need the plane now since plane is going to be infinite in x direction we don't need to mention x in the equation for the plane at all what we are going to do is uh, just uh, write the plane as the equation of the line so for dz the bottom is clearly zero and the top is whatever the equation of the line is which is at the same time equation of the plane because x is infinite stretch so the equation of this line is a yz line right yz line so it's so this line is z equals which is at the same time the plane uh, z equals uh, the slope is um, uh, negative b over a squared y plus b so now we can just write it nicely over here as b minus b over a squared y so this would be the setup if you have a parabola obviously much harder than if you had a half a circle which most of you opted for uh, i did not make any restrictions you were fine to you know take a look at the problem either as a half a circle or, or a parabola whatever whatever makes you happy so same problem uh, worked out as a circle will have the coordinate axis at the at a different place
so we have our wedge over here and uh, if I'm going to use a circle then I'm going to use the center in the middle of the circle so now I have my X and Y axis the way we are used to and um, we have our Z axis now going this way so now if I draw my domain I see half a circle so we're going to use cylindrical coordinates in this case so the upper part was the rectangular coordinates now we're using cylindrical coordinates and as I said it is cylindrical coordinates is much better again from negative A to A that means radius R is A so now we're going to pick some height over here B and we just go through the same same spiel as before um, if I look at the so this is uh, base again and if I look at the side side is going to uh, <coughs> sit on um, uh, this time on X axis there's going to be a Z axis going up and we're going to have a triangle that looks like this the height B this is radius A which immediately gives me this as a equation and you see the slope is B over A X the Y intercept is zero because it goes through the origin so the equation is B over A X So as I am setting up my cylindrical integral dz r dr d theta um, what I see is that theta is going from 0 to pi because we only have half a circle on the bottom are we all green on that theta 0 to pi oh no wait that's on the ah uh, that's on the y-axis it's not 0 to pi it's uh, uh, pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 sorry 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 because it's uh, from the y-axis to the y-axis so I, I have my uh, picture uh, wrong over here it should be this way to have my oh no I actually had it right because I, I put Y axis on the eh whatever well still we're, we're still good and it's better to see it this way if you if you draw it that way okay so so now we see that we have the we have that and then we just go and um, have 2 pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 radius is uh, 0 to a and the z is the bottom dz right it's the bottom which is 0 and the top that it's b over a 
x. Now, can we have x in polar coordinates? No. So what should I write? What's x? R cosine theta. And how much is my? So R cosine theta for x. Ta-da. There we go. So it's a lot of fun. Any other questions, concerns? Exam is two hours, yes. So it will be 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. tomorrow in this room. If anyone online is wondering where we are, we're in California. Nothing else? All right. Then, bye.